Hi all, this is Skate, and following on from yesterday's video, we're going to take a look at Tier 1 to Tier 5 of the new Chinese line. But before we do that, there's a couple of new camos in Update 4.6 I want to show you. So let's start with the mouse. The mouse has two new camos in Update 4.6. The legendary camo, well, one of them being this Legion camo. Um, it will change the name of the tank in-game to Mouse Legionnaire. Obviously, you can see it has the Legion logo on the side slightly adjusted. And this camo will set you back 2,840 gold. And it's not a bad looking camo. It, it looks pretty cool, actually, I've got to give it. But if it's not your cup of tea, there is another mouse camo. And it's certainly, well, it's unique, we will say. <laughs> That is genuinely all I can think about when I look at this tank. But, that being said, I do like it. You've seen that Tiger 2 camo where it's got the uh, different colour dots in, or polka dots, in the camo pattern. It's kind of got a bit of that feel to it, uh, crossed with polka dot afro. I'm <laughs> Yeah, it's an odd one, but to be honest, I'm I'm going to be picking this one up. But my favourite camo so far is for this old thing, the Super Persian. It gets a pretty cool, very understated camo. This one. It just changes the colour of the tank slightly, changes the colour of the armour, adds a couple of little details. It's very understated, and I really like it. And it's the cheapest one of the bunch. This costs 1450 but it just looks great, so I am definitely picking this legendary camo up. It's called Hunter, I don't think it changes the name of the tank, but it's definitely worth one picking up. The next camo is Fire Sentinel. This is just for the Chinese mediums. It costs from 65 gold up to 1,200, um, but again, you can only stick it on the Chinese mediums, and it's not really my cup of tea personally, but I know there are people who are going to be interested in this one. So if you're going up the Chinese line and there's anything you want to keep, you may want to put this camo on it. Last camo of the bunch then is the Snowstorm camo. This is not specific for the Chinese medium line. You can put this camo on any tank. It costs again anywhere from 65 to 1,200 gold. And it looks good. It's not in your face. It's not Larry. Like the clown camo mouse tank, which again... <laughs> <laughs> it's an odd looking tank, but you know what? I do like it. That is enough camo for one day. I imagine there's some which are going to hate that mouse, and some people are going to love it. But for me, <laughs> it is one of those ones I'm going to get. Um, but that is enough on the camos. Let's have a look at tier 1 to 5 on the medium tank line. Yesterday we did five, uh, 6 to 10, so today it's 1 to 5. So starting with the NC31, which is pretty much just... A Reynolds FT. It's got a 13.2mm Hodgkiss gun and it fires an awful lot of shells. You'll see it says it's a three clip autoloader, however, each shot there, I was about to see, fires five each. It's pretty much a machine gun, only does eight damage per shot which penetrates, but if all of your shells penetrate that's 120 damage in a clip which is enough to clip pretty much half a tier 1 tank. Aside from that, um, it's it's a Reynolds. It's exactly like the other ones. It's very, very slow. It's got good gun depression, but it's just a tier 1. I mean, most people are going to skip this tank, and if they don't, then they're going to play usually just a couple of games. All in all, it does feel exactly the same as the Reynolds FT, just with a slightly different gun. Moving on swiftly to tier 2, we've got the Vickers Mark E. Type B. Basically, it's a British tank built in Britain, however, the Brits never used it, so it was sold on to other countries, one of which being China. It's not a bad little tank at tier 2, though. It's got poor gun depression, armor's not too good, but it does have an offset turret, which is nice for popping around corners, and it has a nice little gun. The reload comes in at 8.16, which you can get down with a couple of consumables and some equipment, but again it's tier 2, so I usually personally wouldn't even bother with them. But it has a 3-shot autoloader, 
a respectable 49 millimeters of penetration and as you can see it fires that clip very very quickly there is 0.63 seconds between each shell so you're not going to struggle really with 49 millimeters of penetration at tier 2 and the gun is quite nice when you're poking out and doing approximately 120 damage per clip but it is slow and well it's got no armor whatsoever really it's got 30 mil on the front of the turret aside from that no it's pretty poor um that's pretty much all i'm gonna say about the tier 2 it's just again it's tier 2 i imagine most people are gonna skip this or play it till they get a nice shiny m and then stop from there and then on to the tier 3 this thing has the best gun depression by a long shot in the entire line it's a chiha which is not chinese it's japanese um so obviously it has really really good depression just like the japanese tanks do across their entire medium line before i continue with this tank though did anyone see yesterday's video in the 121 replay where a mouse remember this is a bot mouse I, I know a couple of you saw it but there was a bot mouse which pushed an is7 up a hill to put you in a place which i've never seen anybody go before well, I had a similar experience with the bots today doing real strange things. So, bots are usually useless. So you can see I'm completely disregarding that T28. But for some reason, I've never seen a bot do this. Look at him. He's just reversed perfectly parallel to me and ammo wrecked me. What? <laughs> I've never seen bots do that. And if you didn't see that mouse pushing the IS-7 yesterday, it's about 16 minutes into the video. Go have a look, it's funny. But back onto this little tier 3. Um, it's got bad armor. It's got a nice gun. It's got just over 80 millimeters of penetration. And it does around 60 damage a shot. All in all though. You're pretty much just going to want to use your gun depression everywhere you possibly can. It's again as you can see not very mobile. In fact the mobility considering the armor is appalling. But you just want to sit it on a ridge use that amazing gun depression and just poke and shoot in that sort of situation it's a good little tank but it is a one trick pony that's pretty much all it can do put it in any other circumstance and it might get slaughtered again though all in all not a bad tank this one on the other hand is going to be very very good i think this will look very familiar to a lot of people it's an M5A1 Stuart, pretty much the same tank which is at tier 4 in the American light line. There's a difference though. This has more armour, it has more engine brake horsepower, and it has what I would deem a better gun. First off, on the armour front, an M5 Stuart in the American line has on the front of the turret 38 on the sides and rear 25. This thing has more. This thing has 44 on the front and 31 on the sides. It's not a big difference, but the more armor you add, even if it's insignificant amounts, well, it all helps to get those random bounces sometimes. I wouldn't rely on the armor with this thing, but it may help sometimes. Then onto a brake horsepower front. The M5s in the American line have 361 brake horsepower. This thing has 400. And you can see from the clip right now, it is mobile. It's surprisingly mobile. And then the gun is where the biggest difference is. Now, on the M5 Stuarts, as we know, it has an autoloader and it does 1547 damage in a minute but it only has 56 millimeters of penetration this is not an autoloader it has 60 damage per shot and it has a very respectable 81 millimeters of penetration combine that with 17 rate of fire you can perma track things very very reliably and you can penetrate things very very reliably the downside you have about 500 less DPM than the other M5 Stuart. So M5 Stuart to M5 Stuart, uh, Chinese versus American, well, they got enough penetration to penetrate your armor, so they will probably tear you apart in a one-on-one. -on -one. However, popping ridges, hiding your tank, uh, you're more reliably going to do damage in this thing. Finally then, the Type T34. If anyone remembers from the previous video, the Type 58 is, well, to put it in no uncertain terms, it's worse than the T-3485. So I imagine you'd be expecting the same from this. Well, not really. It is worse. They had to make it just a little bit worse. I don't see why, but they did. Uh, only in terms of hit points, really, though. The T-34 has 690 hit points. This thing has 680. 
On a T-34, you have two top guns, the 57mm or the 76mm. You can't pack the 76mm as a top gun on this, only the 57mm, which means your max penetration is going to be 112, which again, at tier 5, it should be more than enough. He says as he bounces off the side of the turret of a Cromwell. But, um, yeah, the 112, you're not really going to suffer significantly with it, but you can't fit that 76mm. The 76mm on the T-34 provides 125mm of penetration, but you put your DPM under 1,000. This thing, you're looking at over 1,500 DPM. Aside from that, guys, it is pretty much just a T-34 but with 10 hit points less, which kind of feels like they're just making a point there, aren't they? But <laughs> there's no other reason for it, is there? Um, but with the T-34, I'd never run the 76mm anyway. I much prefer this 57mm. So this isn't going to feel any different to a normal T-34. But just like with the Type 58, what is the point in having this T-34 when you can just rock around in an actual T-34 rather than the Type T-34. So if you're looking for a keeper on the line, well, I personally would say don't bother wasting your time with this one. If you get the normal one, you can get an extra 10 hit points. <laughs> Again, I, I don't understand what the reasoning for that is. It's just like, oh, actually, let's give it 10 less just to make a point. That's pretty much it for this, uh, this line. If you haven't seen the other video, it contains the other tanks, along with a quick look around that new garage, if this is the first video of the two you've come across. That was uploaded to the channel yesterday, and I will try and put... I said I'll try. I will put a link in the video description for Tier 6 to Tier 10 for those who haven't seen it. And I have got some actual gameplay of the Tier 10 one to one which I will also put a link for in the video description. But that's it for this one. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.